Hi, I hope everyone's well. I'm going to read Noughts and Crosses. Honestly, Mrs Hadley, said Megan McGregor, wiping her eyes, that sense of humour of yours will be the death of me yet. Jasmine Hadley allowed herself a rare giggle. The things I tell you, Maggie, it's lucky we're such good friends. Maggie's smile wavered only slightly. She looked out across the vast lawn at Callum and Seffy, her son and her employer's daughter. They were good friends, playing together. Real good friends. No barriers, no boundaries. Not yet, anyway. It was a typical early summer's day. Light and bright, and in the Hadley household, anyway. Not a cloud in the sky. Excuse me, Mrs Hadley. Sarah Pike, Mrs Hadley's secretary, approached from the house. She had shoulder-length straw-coloured hair and timid green eyes, which appeared permanently startled. I'm sorry to disturb you, but your husband has just arrived. He's in the study. Camel is here. Mrs Hadley was astounded. Thank you, Sarah. She turned to Maggie. His fourth visit home in many months. We're honoured. Maggie smiled sympathetically, making sure to keep her mouth well and truly shut. No way was she going to get in the middle of another inevitable squabble between Camel Hadley and his wife. Mrs Hadley stood up and made her way into the house. So, Sarah, how's, how is Mr Hadley? Maggie lowered her voice to ask. Is he in a good mood, do you think? Sarah shook her head. He looks about ready to blow a fuse. Why? No idea. Maggie digested this news in silence. i better get back to work, Sarah sighed. Would you like something to drink? Maggie pointed to the jug of ginger beer on the patio table. No, thanks. I don't want to get into trouble. With obvious trepidation, Sarah went back into the house. What was she afraid of? Maggie sighed. No matter how hard she tried, Sarah mis- insisted on keeping her distance. Maggie turned back to watch the children. Life was so simple for them. Their biggest worry was what they'd get for their birthdays. Their biggest grumble was the time they had to go to bed. Maybe things would be different for them. Better. Maggie forced herself to believe that things would be better for the children. Otherwise, what was the point of it all? On those rare occasions when she had a moment to herself, she couldn't help but play what-if games. Not the big what-ifs what her husband sometimes liked to indulge in, like what if a virus wiped out every single cross and not a single knob? Or what if there was a revolution and all the crosses were overthrown, killed, wiped off the face of the planet? No, Megan McGregor didn't believe in wasting her time on big global fantasies. Her dreams were more specific, more unattainable than that. Her dreams were all around one subject. What if Callum and Seffy? What if Steffi and Callum? Maggie felt a particular burning sensation on the back of her neck. She turned to find Mr Hadley standing on the patio watching her with a strange ex- expression on his face. Is everything all right, Mrs Hadley? No, but that's five. Mr Hadley moved forward to the patio table to stand over Maggie. You were deep in thought there. Penny for them? Flustered by his presence, Maggie began... I was just thinking about my son and your daughter. Wouldn't it be nice if... Appalled, she bit back the rest of her sentence, but it was too late. What would be nice? Mr Hadley prompted sulkily. If they could... Could always stay it as they were now. At Mr Hadley's raised eyebrow, Maggie rushed on. At this age, I mean. They're so wonderful at this age. Children. I mean, so... So... Yes, indeed. Pause. Camel Hadley sat down. Mrs Hadley emerged from the kitchen to lean against the door frame. She had a strange war experience in her face. Maggie felt nervous. She started to get to her feet. I understand you had a wonderful time yesterday, Mr Hadley smiled at Maggie. Eh? A wonderful time?